last time I streamed was Friday. It's completely, we don't have done anything since. Um, but we're gonna dive in. So what I'm thinking of doing today is kind of thinking of where we're going. So. If you remember, uh, last time I was streaming, I was working on uh, making it so that our little build nodes here will correctly count um, down. So we can have nodes that can either you know, only be built be built indefinitely if they are set at zero, or if they have a specific number of uh, builds that they can accomplish, once it hits that certain number, you can no longer build on that spot. So you can see that was at three, now it's at two, and then after this it'll be at one, um, as long as I don't lose before then. But this one, because it's at zero, is always going to be there, because it's kind of like a, you can always build on this one, it's not an uh, indestructible one. So that's the idea, that some of these will have, um, you can see once I build on that, it disappears, and now it will no longer, you'll no longer be able to build there. So that's the idea going forward. So now I need to kind of clean it up. One thing I want to do is make sure that I check, uh, if we have something set at zero, we want to make sure that it doesn't display anything. Or, I mean, I guess the way that I really want to do it is um, I have all of these towers here, and right now the uh, the text that displays this is set active by default. Uh, but I think the best way to do this is to come into the tower script and basically have it be, if the tower script is greater than zero, we'll uh, turn this on. So if this tower limit, if um, we come to any tower here, if the tower limit is set greater than zero, then we'll turn this display on. And that means that if the tower limit is actually equal to zero, then it won't turn on and won't display a number, which is what we want, because if the tower is destructible, we want to be able to show it, you know, that it is destructible. And uh, if it's not destructible, uh, or if it, if it has a limit, we want to show that limit up until it dies. So that's the idea. So let's take a look here. What can we do to do this? Um, and we still have this high score not saving, but I still don't want to deal with that. So then these are my next goals. So this is the first one that we're building on. Um, I also want to build into kind of a few other things into this this next uh, release that I'm targeting um, for the end of September here. So the other things that I want to build, um, you know, movable towers, basically. Um, you have a build location that will kind of go back and forth between two points on like a rail or something. Um, adds a little bit more planning and randomness to the game, I think. We'll see how that looks. And then um, give the player the ability to block paths, which would allow you to kind of slow down the enemies. Um, I also want to be able to show how many shots the tower actually has left. So each tower, you can see uh, when we uh, play. So each uh, tower that we build has a certain number of inventory or uh, shots that it can do. So we can go to this food spawner here, which I probably should change. That was an old naming convention. Um, you can see it has 10 shots. So once it fires 10 uh, attacks, it will disappear from the scene and the player will have to rebuild it. So what I need to do is make sure that that is displayed to the player so that they can kind of understand why their towers are dying. Um, and then I'm thinking of doing another six, another five levels. So right now I have one through five. I'd like to design another five um, just to kind of you know keep up with that. And then it's just some, I mean, I see food spawner scripts. It's really a bullet tower uh, and then some other miscellaneous stuff. So I'm already starting to push stuff to version four because I really don't think I'm going to be able to get most of this stuff done uh, by the end of the month, especially if I'm starting to stream, which I think will probably slow me down a little bit. But on the right side, I'll be able to kind of talk through my ideas a little more. So that's kind of where I'm at here. Um, all right, so let's get started here. We're going to dive into our script, and we're going to go, I think what we want to do, so we want this thing to display. So basically all we need to do is um, we have this. Uh, so I'm wondering if I can just do um, the tower limit's greater than zero. What if we just do, um, I think, you know, the problem is that we, we have it set up as this uh, canvas. And that's what we really want to turn on. And I don't think we're really... So that's a tower limit UI. So we want to turn on... We need a reference to this. So basically, I think we can do that in the start function um, for now. And you know, maybe we want to have it in the update too at some point. But I think we can just do... Because you know, we may have something that triggers it later. I don't know. We'll see. Right now, I think all we need to do is a... Um, uh, we'll do this tower limit. So we have zero. Uh, then we get uh, the tower limit UI. So basically, if the tower limits, um, if, that's, if this node's limit is greater than zero, we should set this to true. So now we should be able to just, that should be it. And these two should display it, and this one should not, if this is going to work properly. It's definitely, yep. there we go. So this one doesn't, it's basically a non-destructible build location. This one requires, can only handle five towers, and this one can only handle three. Now obviously I'm going to have to go through and change, you know, balance these at some point. But this whole idea seems to be working, so let's um, go back to my notes and check this off. And then, um, let's see, so towers that move, I think one, this, you know, this level two is actually a good area that we can do something like that. So I'm thinking, like, what if we had a tower that kind of moves from here to here and back, right? So let me duplicate a tower. So we have a new tower, tower three, and we'll put you uh, right here. So the idea would be that we want this tower to basically go from here to here and then back. And as you, so you'll build your tower on it, and this platform will essentially move back and forth. So depending on where the tower is and the tower's range, sometimes it may hit this way, sometimes it may hit this way. And it's just another kind of option for the player to build on. Um, you could also foresee like towers that move like this, which are good in some ways if you can time it correctly because it would follow the thing. I'm thinking that you know there may be a problem where it may be too random, but I just want to you know, kind of see what it looks like. Um, 
and it should be fairly easy to have the towers just move from one point to another point. We just need, so we already have, because I did already try having like player movable things. Um, so we have a is movable boolean, which could be the one that we want to do. And we have is moving, so you know maybe we can um, maybe we can work with those. Let's see here. Right, so I need to make a ability for this to move. So I'm kind of going to have to get another transforming thing. I'm going to need a public transform. It's going to be um, move uh, position A and public transform position B. So this is, I'm thinking that you know maybe maybe down the line I can come up with uh, a more complex system. But right now I'm thinking that you know it's just going to move from one position to the other position, and then back to position A, and it would do that just over and over and over again. So that's going to be a function that gets called um, probably on update. And then once it hits position A, we'll go to, it'll basically have to change its destination. Hmm. So we'll see how this is going to have to work here. I don't think we're going to be using the is moving trigger because it's just a Boolean. We probably don't need that. Um, so let's see. I need to move the tower. So I'm going to need to get those transforms. They're going to have to kind of, I wonder if they're going to be a part of this tower. It would be like, you know, I need to add like basically, um, Position A, and then duplicate, and we'll do position B. Um, so we have these two points now. One of them is position A, the other one we can move to position B. And we'll, we'll put that there for now and we'll see. So then what we need to do is come back up here. What we would need is just to, we have these, so we can um, let's save that, save this script, and then um, basically we'll come over here, and once this builds, we can take position A and put that there, position B and put that there, and then um, we're going to need a float uh, uh, move speed. Uh, let's default that at 5 f I have no idea if that's going to be too fast or too slow. Um, and then basically, I think all we need to do, so we can get rid of this because we're not using oops, we're not using this anymore. So let's reuse this one. Actually, let me make sure I'm not calling it anywhere first. Uh, where did I have this? Okay, so let's get rid of that. Um, so what we want to do is we need to it's going to be tough because we're going to have to get a position, move to that position, and then get the other position, move back to that position. Let me get rid of that. Um, tough, but pretty straightforward, I think. So it's something like if uh, uh, transfer that position um, equals position A. Do user transform. Um, so can I set? Can I do? Um, I probably can't do this. Um, position A and position. So I can't do that. I need to do transform. That's what I thought. But I should be able to set that equal to position. Or I should be able to do like um. Let me just do it down here. It's like a vector to um, start position A. Uh, uh, to position A. Uh, position A. Uh, position A. Uh, position A. So if our current position equals start position, then uh, we're going to want to uh, move to our uh, new position, right? So we just want to do uh, I'm just gonna translate uh, move to just start. Uh, I'm not quite sure how to move these two things. I kind of need to get like a Get a moving script here. Replicated movement. So this is going to get this, and then we need to do. That's kind of what I want, right? Yeah. 
this premise. Um, so we don't have a direction because well, we need to set direction. Uh, this is going to be move speed times time. So all we need is direction. So we have um, we can go back here. What do we set? That's a vector three. So we're going to do it pretty straightforward, I think. And this is going to be transform. Oh no, we want um, uh, position and position. Um, and then we're just going to call this in the update function, I think, and this should move back and forth. Um, we need to do this. Nothing. Well, of course they do, because um, it's a preview, or it's part of the script. So really, it's kind of a bigger project, I think, because the, the real issue is that I don't want to have to set a position for all of our towers here. Do I need to create basically a different tower with a different script to create like a subclass, which would then, um, or I could, yeah, I could create, I could do something like that. So let's do um, unpack prefab because these ones don't have the position, so that's fine. And then I'm gonna just call this um, tower. And then what I think I need to do is um, I can get rid of. Well, let's create a new script here. Um, So um, I'm going to move um, this. I'm going to go up here and I'll do these. And then yeah, move speed. And then we'll go call move. Updates like this. Um, bring this back on. This is going on here. Yeah, this is really, um, really starting to chug on my computer. Resources here. All right, let's see. No dice. Oh, well, hang on. Moving tower. We need to give them A and B. And you know what? We should make sure that. So we're trying to do that, but really I think we need these to be outside of the tower itself um, because we need this to be the same. Okay. And so we're getting no errors now, which is a good thing. But my assumption is it has to do with, so these are the same. So what am I doing for this if statement again? No movement. So we're saying if our position equals the start position, let's just explicitly say position we got. That's what we got. Sometimes you have to be very explicit. Right. Um, it did move. So that's progress. I don't know why it didn't continue to move, but it did move. Oh, because that's only going to move one thing, and then as soon as it's not, as soon as it has moved, um, yeah. Does not equal event. So this should. Nope. Interesting. So it does move slightly, but it doesn't move all the way. I don't know. This is going to be a, a problem for another day, I think. Or at least not for on stream. It's like watching me just struggle at the same thing over and over and over again. I, I think I'm on the right track. I need to just really think through how I want to do this. But let me see if there's something else that's a little, uh, that makes a little more sense here. Yeah, so streaming, I mean, I'm going to try and continue to stream, but it's um, not an ideal setup. I'm just using a 13-inch MacBook here, so it's, um, you know, it's enough to tinker around with some coding, but I don't know. I really don't know if it's enough for to handle uh, all the streaming and everything. 
We'll see. We'll see. I need to get, you know, better at just talking. It's like, I'd like to be able to understand, to be able to explain more of what I'm doing, but I'm very much learning as I go here, as uh, anyone can see who's um, stopped by on this channel um, over the last couple of days. Uh, it's a very, I'm very, very new at C Sharp and Unity, and I'm learning my way around as I go. Um, so, yeah, we're not going to, this one seems a little hard. That one's definitely more trouble than I have to work on. I could do this. How much time have I been streaming for? I, I want to try to keep my, I've only got about 10 minutes or so. So maybe I will just um, end it here for today and uh, we'll pick it up again another time. I'm gonna, I think what I'm going to do is stop streaming so that I can kind of focus on figuring out um, the problems that I've kind of unearthed here already. Um, and when I figure everything out, I'll make sure to uh, kind of explain it in the next video. Um, I would love to hear some feedback on this this idea of streaming game dev um, stuff and just the behind the scenes of what I'm doing with this game as I'm learning how to code. Um, let me know what I can do to make it better. Let me know what I can do to you know make it more interesting for people out watching out there. Um, you know, I can tell based on uh, looking back at the um, stream stream uh, stats that you know only a few people even made their way into the stream today. So uh, it's going to be a while until I get feedback. But I feel like I'll, if I say it enough, maybe one or a few, one, one, one of these times I'll uh, start uh, seeing people um, in the chat, which would be nice to see. But anyway, thank you for watching today. I'd love to um, stream again tomorrow for a little bit. And like I said, I'm going to try and do um, you know, between 40 and an hour uh, Monday through Friday if I can. And from this 40 to one hour of streaming, what I'm going to try and do is um, take that, chop it down into 15 to 20 minutes, and put that on my YouTube channel. Um, so if you don't want to sit through and watch all of the crazy uh, ums and confused silence, uh, you can get kind of a more streamlined and uh, cut, uh, faster cut. So you got the highlights on YouTube. Uh, anyway, I'll be back tomorrow. Thanks for watching. I'll see you then. Bye.